This is the Khalidiyah camp for internally displaced people in Iraq's Ambar province. At the height of the military operations against ISIL in 2015, it was home to 7,000 people. Government officials have come to see it closed. The last 150 or so families that had remained here finally returned home. We've closed it as part of a government program to resettle all IDP camps. It's a program criticized by aid workers who say it's happening too quickly and it's still too dangerous. More than three million people had returned to their homes by the middle of this year, but more than two and a half million others are still displaced, according to the International Organization for Migration. Mohammed Jassim was one of those brave enough to go back home, but his family house was destroyed in the war, so Mohammed is living in a tent. Some of his relatives are here to help him. Our situation is desperate. There's nothing to salvage from our home. It's not a home anymore, actually. We urge the government to pay us the compensation it promised. Others complain they have to live with the threats from booby traps and exploded bombs and other devices and the health risk posed by the decomposed bodies that lie on the land where their houses once stood. For a whole day, earth-moving machines have been excavating the rubble in my compound and recovered dozens of bodies. There were at least five to six bodies in each of several shallow holes we found here. The devastation, poverty and lack of services in areas recaptured from ISIL have forced many to choose to stay in the camps. For others, it isn't economically viable to leave. Some have been able to set up barber shops or fruit stands at makeshift markets, making about $50 a month. Unable to put up with the lack of basic services when they have returned home, many have been forced to go back to camps that are still open. For them, the forlorn and desperate search for sanctuary continues. Mohammed Adwal Jazeera, Baghdad.